Coach, uh, thanks for joining us uh, on the call uh, today. We've been uh, conducting calls with our varsity head coaches over the last uh, few weeks um, with the media. But Coach, why don't you start out the call uh, by kind of giving uh, the media an up update on your season, a recap, if, if, you, if you will, and, and how you were about a month out from uh, completion of your uh, season before the news came down. Yeah, so we have, um, as I'm sure everyone is, uh, is aware of, we have our main season begins in January. So we are a spring sport, obviously. Um, we do play uh, tournaments in the fall semester, which kind of allows us to, prefer, to prepare for our uh, dual match season. Um, and um, kicking the season off in January, we go through the pre-Big 12 schedule which encompasses about nine to 10 matches before we hit the, uh, the Big 12 season, which usually starts early March or, you know, kind of second week of March. So basically um, we were just starting to sink our teeth into, the, uh, into the, the Big 12 season as the news started to, to come out and arise and, you know, that, with, with a wave of infections and you know, and some teams started talking about canceling travel and you know we were actually heading into the weekend um, having TCU and Texas Tech travel to Morgantown for a pair of matches and uh, we started receiving calls from TCU saying that you know they are not looking to travel during the weekend so that's when we knew that things were getting a lot more serious at that time. We still practiced on that day actually and uh, the day after we started hearing from our own administration as well, that we are basically preparing to shut everything down um, very likely for the remainder of the season, right? But the first news that came out, I believe was only for that particular weekend as far as competition. Um, you know, a quick recap of kind of where we were. Um, we had, um, I thought we had a, a good start to the season, I would say. Um, we played fairly well out of conference. Um, we had, um, you know, record-wise, we did well. Um, we uh, we won a good a, a good amount of matches, um, and I thought performance-wise, um, the players were able to get um, into their game fairly well, and were able to um, um, make the progress that we were looking for. Um, you sorry, I lost everybody for a second. Can anybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. My internet can be a little bit unstable on occasion. So if something like that happens, I'll just pause for a second until, until I see other people moving on the screen again, then I know that we're up and running. So, um, yeah. So forgive me of that. I'm running off of my home Wi-Fi here. So it's, we're, we're trying to do best we can. So I was saying, um, performance wise, I felt like the players were, um preparing for the big 12 season well i thought that they were getting into their games and and making progress kind of in terms of what we expected during the pre big 12 season and uh we were really looking forward to um you know kind of going through the big 12 matches um taking our season to the big 12 tournament you know and uh, and and make, make make making a good impact this year um we were three matches into the season when the news came out. So basically we just played three matches in the big 12 and then our season was cut short. All right, your first question here comes from Greg Hunter. Greg, go ahead. So coach, I know you have a number of international, um, you know, student athletes on your squad. So where are they now? I mean, are you able to check up on them uh, as well as those from America? Yes, thank, thank you for the question, Greg. This actually kind of is a, is a nice segue kind of to where we are currently, right? Um, we, uh, we do have a good amount of internationals on the roster. Um, we have a, uh, um, a few that are from the United States as well. And um, fortunately, most of our players were able to, to, uh, to travel back home to spend this time with their families. So, um, you know, given the situation and the fact that they can obviously take all the classes online, um, it is, I think, prudent for the players to be with their families during this time and be able to, you know, make it through this in, in, the, in the circle with their, you know, parents, um, brothers, sisters um, in, in their homes. Um, 
we're also very fortunate in that all the players have continuous access to the, the needed technology so we can continue to stay in touch um, with them on, on, on continuous basis, right? So we, we haven't necessarily lost track of anyone because they traveled home, right? We only have one player that did not get to travel home during this time. Um, her name is Sofia and she is from Ecuador. And as she was getting ready to, to, uh, to find flights and basically go home, the country of Ecuador, um, where she's from, closed down um, the, uh, the airports and, and the borders, and she was not able to travel anymore. So, you know, she's in Morgantown, uh, but she's well taken care of. Um, you know, she, she is, she's in a circle of, of friends and she's, she's in a, you know, her fiance is here with her as well. So um, she's not by any means, you know, by herself, just stuck in an apartment. So, um, you know, she's, she's well taken care of and um, completing the rest of the semester online, just like if she was back at home in Ecuador. So it's, uh, that doesn't really change regardless of where players are, but um, they're well taken care of and we're able to stay in touch with them regardless of kind of, you know, whether they're from the U.S. or whether they're international. Yeah. All right, next question from John Antonic. John, go ahead. Coach, along those lines, I know um, you've got um, – uh, a girl from Russia where the activity is starting to pick up a little bit. Not, we don't really know how much um, is going on there right now. And of course, Michigan, what are you, what are you telling the players? What, what are you trying to do to keep them uh, positive and um, encouraged uh, to get through this? I, I believe that, you know, in a given situation, which whichever way we spin this, it's a tough situation, right? Like there, there's no way to, to kind of figure things out in, in, in that, you know, the, not, not to make it tough on them, right? I mean, their season was cut short, you know, that's, that's a tough way to end um, the spring season, especially kind of where we were as a team and how well we, we were progressing this spring. However, I think it's more important to know that there are some things that are bigger in life than, you know, than being able to play tennis for us, right? And in a given situation, they understand that. But I feel like it's important that, um, just like for all of us, that the players are well informed about what is going on, um, what the situation is, how the situation is progressing, and that in a given situation, what they can do to, to be healthy, to be safe, um, and at the same time, to continue to be successful in, first and foremost, their academics, because the semester is obviously still going on and we have to finish the, the class as well. And then secondly, the other things that they can do to maintain best they can um, through this time um, and continue to prepare for when they will be able to get back on the court and restart their, their practices, right? So I believe information is very important and um, we are doing um, everything we can to pass on all the information that we have um, from the medical professionals to, you know, to our administration staff um, in terms of, you know, what the, uh, what the different governments are sharing with us um, so that they are aware of kind of a full scope of the picture and they feel like they're informed about, you know, how, the, how, how, how everything is progressing. And I think that's putting them a little bit more at ease to know that, you know, it's not necessarily going to continue to be an easy situation, but, um, you know, we will make it through this and, and you know, and, and um, you know, regardless of kind of how long it goes at the end of the day, this will end someday and we will be back at, you know, <laughs> hopefully sooner rather than later, but we will be back here and, you know, back on the courts and, 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 and playing and competing and resuming our somewhat um, everyday lives, I guess, maybe in a little bit of a different form, but, you know, um, this will end someday as well. So. Next question comes from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. So, Coach, I know your roster has a couple of seniors in, in spring sport athletes, you know, are, are allowed to get in an additional year. So have you talked to your seniors about coming back? Uh, some already have plans to move on with life. So what's that discussion been like? Yes, we, we, we have. And that's a uh, – if, if our heart goes out to anyone, it's, it, it, it's, it's to the seniors, right? Um, you know, in, in a given situation, everyone received 
an additional year of eligibility, right? Uh, but obviously for seniors, this could be a very different situation, right? Um, you know, both of our seniors are scheduled to graduate. Um, so they will actually be graduating on time. Um, and, but any, any further details as far as the, uh, the, the, the financials and scholarships or anything like that, I mean, all of those things are it, sort of in discussion, right? I mean, it's a, it's a very fluent situation. Um, we don't necessarily have all the final answers and um, we are receiving information from the administration kind of as we go as well. So we're, we're still in, in discussion with how potentially that could look like or you know, if, if anyone would be you know, at the point of returning, right? But they're, they're both scheduled to graduate on time. So I'm very happy about that, right? So they don't necessarily need the additional year to be able to accomplish the most important thing that they set out when they come to, to WBU, which is, you know, to, to graduate and move on with their life eventually. Right? All right, your next question comes from Kevin Kender. Kevin, go ahead. Coach, other than obviously recruiting really good student athletes, what are a couple of the keys for you in building a program? What worked for you at Georgia State that you're still working on trying to implement here at West Virginia? Well, um, kind of, kind of going back a little bit in history here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, no, I, I, I appreciate the question. Um, is we, you know, coming from a place um, at Georgia State where it was a very different situation, right? But nevertheless, I mean, the 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 lessons learned from from years of coaching are are very valuable, right? Um, so, you know. A different situation being in that obviously Georgia State competes in a very different environment. I mean, a very different conference, right? Um, this is this is college athletics at the highest level, right? Um, you know, with the with the team at Georgia State, we competed in a very you know with a very good schedule, but not nearly as brutal as what we experienced in the Big Twelve. Right? Um, not necessarily discarded, but um, we do have to do things differently in a given environment, right? For us, you know, most important thing that we look at, let's say, you know, being results oriented, right? At the end of the day, when we get into the Big 12 matches, that is the level that we are challenged with, right? That's, that's where we need to be as a team, as a program, and be ready to compete week in and week out at the level that, that the other programs in the Big, Big 12 have established, right? Um, that being the case, that's the mentality that we take into every day when it comes to preparation on the court, off the court, everything that we do as players, as staff to prepare at the highest level possible to be competitive in the Big 12 conference, right? So some of these things in, in our program have really been upgraded from what we were doing at Georgia State, right? Not necessarily that we didn't strive to be at our best at Georgia State. That's not what I'm trying to say. But first of all, we didn't have the same resources available. So even if we wanted to run the program at the same level, we probably would not be able to do so, right? But more importantly, right, um, you know, the competition that we were facing at Georgia State and, and um, you know, the, the, the overall direction and the mentality, you know, of, 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 of our competition within the department was different, right? And, and you know, not everything was done as at as high high of a level as it is now, and you know that I'm not really referring to the the things that we do on the court, right? Because that's always going to be done at the best level that 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 we can. But um, I'm talking and referring mostly to the resources that we have available outside of the the tennis courts, right? I mean. You know, if you really think, you know, having a nutritionist, having a sports psychologist, I mean, having a, uh, um, an athletic trainer that's with us 24 hours a day, right? I mean, having a strength and conditioning coach that, that helps us run the conditioning program day in and day out, right? Those are not the resources we had available at Georgia State. And thus, we are able to, to, to really lift our program to a much higher level than what we were doing before, right? But... You know, there are fundamental things that I think are very important, right? I mean, my mentality 
hasn't changed necessarily in terms of what you know what i i believe are priorities for the program right how i want us to function and operate as a team right you know the fact that you know this is um the way that we do things is very much in a you know family oriented environment for example that doesn't change necessarily whether you're a georgia state or west virginia right that's what i believe in right um you know the fact that academics are extremely important right that doesn't change regardless of you know whether i'm coaching at west virginia or georgia state right and the fact that with the give with given resources we want to be the best that we can be as a team and we want to be the best that we can be as individuals that doesn't change either right so the goals technically are the same but obviously the level at which we compete and operate has changed right so many of those lessons i mean were well learned in the past right um and some of those lessons were really upgraded to to fit the resources that we have available here at west virginia and obviously to um to be to be competitive in the environment that we are in right uh, next question from John Antonic. John, go ahead. Along the lines of, of what uh, Kevin uh, said, um, I know you when you took over, it was a pretty significant rebuild. Um, do you think you've made progress in terms of being able to be more competitive with some of the top teams in the Big 12? Are you getting Big 12 caliber players in the program now? Getting closer to that? We, without a doubt, we've made progress. Um, you know, I would say that <clears throat> what's been what's been great to kind of be a part of is that process that we go through year in and year out right and i i would describe that even though it may seem like we haven't necessarily made any huge leaps right as a program we have been getting closer every single semester that we have gone through so far and we are inching closer and closer to the level of competition in the big 12 right um you know, are we at a point where we can vie for the top spots in the Big 12 Conference? No, we're not there yet, right? But we have definitely caught up with other teams in the conference, right? Not necessarily the, the teams that are competing for the Big 12 Championship, which would, you know, this year would probably be Texas, Baylor, Oklahoma State, right? Would probably be the three teams that would be the top teams in the conference, right? But we are definitely in position where we have caught up with other programs that are, you know, bottom to mid range in the big 12, right? So we are becoming extremely competitive in that environment, right? We had made, it's kind of easy to forget, right? Because when I came in, um, talent was probably, obviously talent was not where it needed to be on the team, right? And even to this day, right? I mean, I would say we have a lot of work left to do developmentally, and we have a lot of work left to do recruiting wise to continue to upgrade that talent. But the biggest issue we faced was actually everything else but talent. I mean, not but talent, but everything else before we were able to start addressing the talent, right? Um, you know, unfortunately, the, um, you know, the, the, the way that the team was used to working and the way that the team was, um, you know, the mentality that we had on the team and the, uh, I mean, just plain and simple, I mean, the way that we were as a team was not very good. Um, you know, there was very little sense to, 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 to even understand that, that we are all in, you know, on the same team here and that we are all working in the same direction, right? I mean, the relationships on the team were not very good. Um, you know, the, uh, the atmosphere on the team was not very good. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the, just the habits that players had outside of the tennis court in terms of what it means to be an athlete at the highest level in college athletics were not very well understood, right? Um, and correcting all of those things takes time, right? Um, you know, it's easy to say, you know, hey, you know, we, we can recruit a couple of great players and everything will be fine, but that's not necessarily the case, right? You know, if we have poor team atmosphere, we can recruit a great, great player and that's not going to change, right? So the way that I see the process of that we're going through is really building very solid fundamental um, aspects of the program that we are now building upon, right? So, you know, things like, you know, understanding and knowing that this is, this is a family, right? That we're, all, all, we're all in the same place, right? We're all working towards the same goal. We're all here to support each other, right? We're not here to, 
you know, cut, kind of cut each other down to some extent, right? We're all here to work and, and push each other forwards, right? That's a very important aspect of the program that we have come a long way in, right? Um, making sure that as a team, we don't just work well when we get on the court for the practice time, but that players understand that being a, a, a student athlete at the highest level is really a 24 hour a day job, right? academically, athletically, outside of the court preparation, you know, in terms of um, rehab, prehab, um, sports psychology, I mean, really bettering yourself in every aspect of preparation is something that we are doing a much better job now in than we did obviously in the beginning when I came in, right? And all of those aspects are, are, are things that are setting us up for success when we are adding more talent, right? If we were just adding more talent to begin with and other issues were not addressed, we wouldn't have gotten very far, right? So that's, you know, back to your um, question there, Kevin, that's actually one of the things that I have learned very early in my career at Georgia State, um, being an extremely young coach at the time and needing to prove myself very quickly when I took over the team at, at Georgia State, which was actually a very similar situation to what we're looking at at West Virginia, right? So, you know, the team wasn't necessarily extremely successful, um, didn't have a, a successful history at, at, you know, competing at a high level. And the way that we went about that first and second year at Georgia State was sort of having a little bit of luck in recruiting, but we added a lot of talent very quickly, right? which was great, but at the same time, we forgot to build certain other aspects of the program. We all relied on the fact that, you know, when we added a few talented players, we started having extremely good results um, very quickly. And what happened, Kevin, was that after those, in, that in, those initial two years, because the, 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 the basics were not established in the program very well, like team culture, you know, like work ethic, like all those other things, everything fell apart very quickly. So basically what happened was we went back to square one and then we had to start rebuilding again, right? So, you know, having learned those lessons early in my career, that's something that obviously, you know, when, when, when I came to West Virginia University, that's, that's not gonna be overlooked, right? We're not gonna make the same mistakes. We're not gonna be taking steps back, even if sometimes a step forward is maybe a little bit slow, right? But we need to be moving forward and in the right direction. All right, we'll have the final question here from Greg Hunter, unless anyone else has anything. Um, go ahead, Greg. So, Coach, a lot of what you talked about, uh, obviously, is team building, but also the recruiting aspect. And your recruiting is interesting. I mean, even in a normal time with the international flavor, not just one continent or two, but three. So uh, how do you do it? I mean, how do, how do you find players spread over thousands and thousands of miles? In, in any way possible, Greg. That's the, <laughs> you know, um, it, it, it's not it's not that there's necessarily a blueprint for it right i mean we we're, we recruit from all over the globe tennis is such an international sport that um players really come from everywhere right i mean you you can find um players from extremely remote places that are very talented right and sometimes overlooked because they're not kind of in the in the midst of the tennis world which for the most part would be united states europe probably south america and now asia at the same time right Sometimes you find players from, you know, from, from, the, from Africa that, you know, could be overlooked to some extent. You know, you may find players from remote islands in the Pacific, right, which we had some extremely good players in the past from there when I was at Georgia State, right? Um, so it's really a, a kind of a long-winded process of, of going through a lot of contacts, a lot of results, a lot of tournaments, a lot of um, finding information of players that, Sometimes you don't really know where that's going to lead you to start off with, but, you know, in the end, you either are able to recruit that particular player or maybe you, you're able to recruit other players from that same area as you establish contacts, right? So we're basically digging through any and all information that we can find through tournaments, um, personal contacts that we have. So obviously not just myself, but, you know, Jacob, our assistant coach, I mean, he's doing an unbelievable job at, you know, um, being able to sift through all of that information on a daily basis and, and come up with new prospects that we should be looking at, right, from, from places that sometimes, you know, we haven't been recruiting from before. So 
Um, it's really a never ending process, a never ending process. And sometimes that process starts from kind of the very beginning of trying to recruit someone from a place that we, where we don't know a single person. Right. Um, or sometimes, you know, we already know a lot of people that either work with that prospect or maybe have competed against or have played against that prospect. Right. So, but it's, we don't necessarily have only particular places that we recruit from just because tennis is such a wide, I mean, just a worldwide sport, right? So prospects can really come from anywhere for us, right? So we're always approaching our recruiting through the mindset of, you know, keeping all of our options open pretty much from anywhere that we can find contacts, players, um, names of players. Um, so it's a, it, it's a worldwide search for us on a continuous basis, right? I mean, now only via electronic media, just because that's the only thing we have available to us right now. But otherwise, I mean, you know, in a, in a normal situation, that would include international trips, that would include, you know, in-person visits, um, wherever that may be. I mean, last year we visited a couple of international locations, you know, from Canada, Germany, um, Japan. Um, so, you know, but that's obviously under normal circumstances. So, um, you know, it's just, it's just a continuous sifting through information, finding players and making sure that, that we are with, you know, that, that we're going through this process with the ultimate goal, which for us is to find the best fit for our program that we can find athletically, academically, and who, the, who that person is as a person, right? How they fit into our team and our program. All right, Miha, appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and shoot it over the, to Brian Messerly here.